Hello everyone, my name is Matt Murphy and I'm here with John Takeshki and welcome to the File Catalyst webinar series. For this edition of the File Catalyst webinar series, we will be looking at how our solutions File Catalyst Direct, File Catalyst Workflow, and File Catalyst Central, and how they can help boost efficiency and reliability across AEC workflows by providing faster, more secure, and more flexible file transfers across your entire organizational workflows. To begin, let's take a look at what File Catalyst is and some of the key features that help us stand out in the file transfer space. Mainly, File Catalyst is known for transferring your files at full length speed. We accomplish this fast file transfer speeds by our patented, built-in-house UDP-based protocol. Our proprietary protocol is designed to overcome latency, packet loss, and other forms of speed degradation that might be present on the line during a file transfer. We have also included some additional features into our solutions that other solutions don't provide, including congestion control, automatic resumes, and many more. We also provide industry standard AES encryption, making sure that all of your data, be it confidential blueprints, engineering files, or large CAD files, we make sure that all of your data is secure while it's in flight and while it's at rest. We also integrate with major st cloud storage providers including Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, OpenStack, Wasabi, Cloudian, Google Drive, and more. Now let's take a look at some use cases in the AEC space in terms of file transfers. And one of them is project management. When working on AEC projects, large numbers of organizations, all with vastly different roles and located all over the world, come together towards the same goal of finishing the structure, infrastructure, or whatever the final product may be. And without help, it can become very difficult to manage all of the plans, blueprints, AutoCAD, 3DS Max files, and all of the other various data associated with the project. With File Catalyst, not only do you get multi-gigabit transfer speeds for your project, you can also use File Catalyst as a central storage location for one or more web folders, keeping all of your files organized, managed, and accessible to all of the team members from anywhere in the world. And now let's take a look at collaboration. When it comes to AEC, team members working on the project may be many miles away from the actual site, and the rest of the team may be dispersed just as much around the world. And when using traditional file transfers that leverage the FTP or TCP protocol, packet loss and other forms of latency can have detrimental effects on your transfer speeds. But no matter where your files have to go or where you need to receive your files, File Catalyst Direct provides you with transfer speeds that will move files at unprecedented speeds, up to 10 gigabits per second. And File Catalyst Direct also provides client applications that uh, help you sync data across all of your organizational endpoints and many other features with the client apps. Now let's take a look at some of the issues that affect the TCP protocol in terms of file transfer speeds. At the bottom of this slide, you can see an example of a TCP-based transfer in progress. The source is on the left and the destination is on the right and the center orange square re represents packets of information and acknowledgements. And when you transfer a file via TCP or FTP, the entire file is broken down into many very small packets of information and then they are sent one by one to the destination. The problem, however, with TCP is that these packets have to be sent in sequential order and each packet has to arrive at its destination with the acknowledgement being ba sent back to the sender before the next packet can be sent out. And this need for uh, sequential transactions is one of the root causes of speed degradation and it only becomes worse when any form of it is found on the connection. When degradation is present, TCP reacts to this by limiting the transmission window, and this further slows the transfer by creating even more dead air during it. And this is a very aggressive approach, and unfortunately it can't be attuned or adjusted on the application layer. TCP is also a poor choice for transferring files across wireless, satellite, or long-haul links. And for AEC companies with customers and partners around the world, long-haul links are a very common way to transfer these files. And the performance is less than ideal for these use cases, especially when more complex projects emerge that are made up of high-resolution graphics and very large project files. 
There sometimes is tuning available, however, but it's still not ideal for many to wander one to many transfers. And because this is lacking, it makes synchronization tasks much harder than they need to be. And now this next slide shows how latency affects speed with TCP and with File Catalyst. So we have what's called round trip time. And round trip time is the time it takes for a packet to be sent and an acknowledgement to be received by the sender. So as I mentioned earlier, it's very transactional. So the first packet has to be sent. And once the receiving end receives the packet, it has to send an acknowledgement that acknowledges that it received it and it gives the go ahead to send the next packet. And that, that whole transaction is referred to as round trip time or RTT. And as you can see, as soon as the RTT uh, increases even marginally, the throughput drastically drops with FTP TCP. And this has detrimental effects on transfer speeds, especially when transferring large files. And also, as you can see on the top is file catalyst. And you can notice that we're able to maintain at transfer speeds no matter how much the RTT increases. So you can be sure that we're always maximizing your throughput. Now let's take a look at File Catalyst's fast file transfer technology and some of the ways we stand out and overcome these aforementioned issues with the TCP protocol. At the bottom of this slide, you can see an example of a File Catalyst transfer in progress with the source file on the left again and the destination on the right. But looking at ours, you'll notice that we can send multiple larger packets without the need to wait for an acknowledgement. And this is because we leverage the UDP protocol. And our solutions are ideal for bulk file transfers, which is ideal for sending large data sets of very small files or archives as well if you're backing up previous projects. And File Catalyst is not only predictable, it can be fine tuned to an exact rate allowing you to send files at whatever speed you deem appropriate for your transfer. File Catalyst protocol is unaffected by latency and packet loss, which as we mentioned before, seriously affects TCP FTP transfer speeds. And to maximize your transfers throughout peak periods and downtime, we allow congestion control in the application layer, so you can adjust the bandwidth usage on the fly as you deem appropriate. We also let users adjust the aggression of the congestion control for even more granularity. Our solutions can also instantly detect link capacity, so it can automatically see your link and then we can maximize it from there. And now at this point of the presentation, I'll hand the webinar over to John. And John will show you how to use the File Catalyst bandwidth calculator, give you a demo of our solutions, File Catalyst Direct, File Catalyst Workflow, and File Catalyst Central, and give an overview of our licensing options. And without further ado, here's John. Thanks, Matt. So we have a little bandwidth calculator here uh, that we've created on our website. If you go to our website, filecatalyst.com, and you go to resources, bandwidth calculator, we've built this little calculator here to give you an idea of uh, what things look like. So let's go, we'll just pick here uh, sort of a, a, a use case between Vancouver and London. Uh, and we're gonna do here 100 megabit link. Once you click on this, you can see that file catalyst transfer speed is uh, a minute 27 seconds uh, with TCP based transfer would take 40 minutes for the same one gig file. So the increase in speed is substantial. Um, the 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 further the the further the two uh, two network nodes the better the performance of you'll see a better performance so if i for example uh, make the the long haul distance network a bit smaller so let's say i'll go to new york to london uh you can now see that it's only 13 times faster so but but you can see still a, it's a considerable improvement in speed and bandwidth saturation um, things get much more interesting also once you go over satellite vessel so if i pick the satellite vessel to new york and I'll drop the speed here to, let's say, 20 megabits. Uh, you can see that the speed now is, you know, 24 times faster because it's a 20 megabit link. And really, the calculations used here is the delay, so 638 millisecond delay for a satellite connectivity. So it's around trip time off the packet to arrive to from one place to another. And Another thing that is uh, uh, important, one thing that is calculated here for you is the packet loss. So average packet loss on the internet, I think is 
uh, 6%, and that's what I think we put on our calculations. Of course, once you go into satellite microwave links, that, that drastically increases and uh, gives you a different speed. So, so the, feel free to try this calculator. You have lots of options here and to see the difference performance in, in, within the speed. So File Catalyst offers, uh, we have a product portfolio, we have three products that help with file, with file transfers. Uh, we have the File Catalyst Direct product, Central, and Workflow. Today's presentation is going to be concentrating predominantly on Direct and Central. Uh, we're not going to touch much on Workflow, um, but uh, I'll just give you a quick uh, inter review here of what product is. So Direct is our main core product. This is our core technology for transferring uh, files. The deployment of File Catalyst servers, usually in your central location where you wish your data to be centrally managed and reside. And then you have some kind of an internet connectivity. Once again, it just has to be an IP link. And then you have, and then you have multiple different client applications that can connect and either push the data to your storage or pull the data from the storage. All these client applications are bidirectional. So you can do uploads and downloads. Uh, so what do we have here? We have a hot folder for automated tasks, for synchronous folder synchronization, for scheduling tasks. So hot folder can wake up at 1 a.m., check for new file sets, and push them to your file catalyst server. Or vice versa, it could be waking up at 3 a.m., checking for new files here and pulling them down. And then you can control all the other aspects of the transfer, like how much bandwidth, uh, what file sets, filtering, all that stuff. I'll get into that during my demo. Desktop app is pretty much like a FileZilla app. Uh, it's a two panes. You have a left pane that gives you, shows you local file, your local files, and the right pane shows you the remote files, and then you just drag and drop files between them. Pretty much similar like FileZilla or Fetch or many other FTP clients out there. Uh, browser base, uh, the browser integration, it, it gives the user and user ability to upload files directly to File Catalyst Direct Server to a specific folder, or also to initiate links. And that's the ability to send uh, email links to recipients. So recipient just clicks on the link, gets brought to a download page where the files that were uploaded to them are available for them to pick up and download. Mobile, if you go to Google Play or iTunes, you'll find our application and you can install it on your on your mobile device and you're off to the races to uh, transfer data from mobile device. SDK is everything that is uh, automated. So, uh, sorry, everything that is uh, API or like no user, no end user intervention type of thing. So here you have our command line tool, uh, you have our Java API, our C++, .NET, REST, all of that is kind of bundled with the SDK, and then you can initiate calls through an API. Of course, most popular these days is doing REST, uh, but we do have C++ and Java if uh, that's required. Uh, central is our uh, visibility layer or management layer of the uh, product. So imagine now you have a file catalyst server deployed in your central office. You might have 15, 20 different watch folders from coming in from around the world from different drilling sites. And now you need to uh, have a visibility and reporting and management layer. So you log into central and then you can see your nodes. You can see existing transfers, reports raise alarms if something doesn't work. Uh, so that's all built into to central. As well, it allows you to look, connect to any of the node and change configuration on the fly without needing to have remote desktop access or uh, without having necessarily access to the box. Workflow, this is the product I'm not going to talk too much for in, in this space, but uh, Workflow is a web portal. Imagine it's a web-based file transfer portal uh, where there's uh, you can combine uh, files with metadata or like you can prompt the user to enter certain information before they start an upload. Uh, they could be specifying due dates, they could be selecting drop downs, uh, or they could be doing checkboxes. And depending on the selection from that form, the files will lend in exactly the location you need on the server that you need for that specific process. Uh, there's also a whole feedback notification process to the submitter. So if someone submits four files and describes them, 
then they can be kept in the loop when those uh, file these files are processed and 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 uh, created. Uh, the other part is that the workflow can also send email links. You get some much more advanced features here with uh, than than file catalyst link and direct. Uh, where you know you can password protect the downloads, you can have uh, two-factor authentication for the downloads uh, via links, and uh, gives you more customizable, uh, customi uh, customized options for these transfers. Last uh, last option workflow it allows you to do create web folders, uh, sharing of web folders, which can be connected also to hot folder or API, and uh, then users can share uh, data sets and upload and download with a full history. So, so this is more of a web portal with automation. Um, uh, the, I, I will not be doing a demo of this today, but I'm sure there's other webinars. If you go to our website, you can download a webinar for a workflow if you're interested in this piece. Finally, the the big the, the big change to uh, in IT uh, over the last uh, th several years was uh, ability to create object stores and storing data for either archival processing, or if you are buying an additional computing power on, on the cloud, then everything is going to be dropped into an object store. Uh, we we integrate with uh, you know Azure, Backblaze, Wasabi, S3. Uh, Google Platform. So if you need to move data to a cloud storage, uh, this is uh, object store. This is where it's. Um, uh, this will be very useful. We also work with a number of private um, uh, cloud solution providers like Keringo, Cloudian, SwiftStack, uh, where you want to create your own S3 private S3 object store and send data there for archival or processing. So File Catalyst uh, Direct Server can integrate with all these platforms. Let's do a demo here. Of so, I'm going to be showing you the File Catalyst Direct uh, demo. I'm going to be talking about the server piece here. So, this is uh, the, the 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 server piece that uh, you can create your users. You can create your users, and you can transfer files. Uh, that user, once that user is created, they can either upload or download files to to the server. So some of the features here you you might uh, be interested in is you have the ability to create you know SFTP keys. Uh, you have ability to lock accounts or create an accounts that are uh, temporary, like work only for three four days and then stop working. And also you have uh, the force file ownership on. On, on files on both Windows and Linux. So when the user uploads these files, the files will land as a specific user on the system. This is very useful in supercomputing applications uh, where you need to track where the content came from and who was the owner or the originator. Um, uh, some uh, other thing you can here, you can define which user can upload or download or modify files. Uh, you have also the ability to create uh, users and groups. So what what that means is that, for example, you have four users that need to share same data set. Well, you could point them all to the same home directory, which is not which is complicated. Or what you can create is you can go to our virtual folder list and make a, a number of these virtual folders or even files. And this is a completely different path on the system. And then all these users, so you can decide which which user can upload, download to that directory. Uh, and uh, delete files and, and so on. So this is really good for sharing or collaboration on big data sets for multiple users. You can create as many of these virtual folders and, uh, and assign them to specific users. You can group these folders into a group. So let's say you could have an R&D group. So as soon as a user is created, you assign them to R&D group and they get right away access to uh, all the R&D collaboration folders. Another another th thing for user management on a direct server is that you, you can authenticate against LDAP and Active Directory. Uh, so you can manage centrally your users. If you need to remove add or remove users, you just do you work through your Active Directory or LDAP interface uh, to, to manage who gets access to File Catalyst server. File Catalyst server is uh, also uh, acts as an FTP server, SFTP server, and FTPS server. So for those that uh, 
end users that cannot, for example, install our software, they can still use uh, tools like FileZilla or their existing FTP API to upload files. Uh, there will be no acceleration, but uh, you will they'll be a, have access to the entire uh, workflow, including the reporting, the management of users, the virtual folders, and all that stuff is still created for them. So, uh, so this is something that is also built into the server. For security, everything is secured of AES and SSL. Um, uh, we have as well IP filtering uh, where you can whitelist or blacklist the IPs for more secure information. Uh, you have remote administration of the server. So if you want to, uh, the server is installed far and you need to log in and make changes, you can. Um, last feature I wanted to talk about uh, uh, direct is that there is the link feature here. So this allows you to select certain files on the server and share those files via email with somebody else. And link allows you to, you know, bundle a whole bunch of files together give it a link ID uh, over here, and then email this link ID to a user so the user can pick up these files. So the way you get to, the way you get to your, this interface is that this is your link interface. You can see all the transactions that have been sent. But if you want to get to the interface, you just click on HTTP settings here, and you go to the web root of File Catalyst. So each File Catalyst server comes with a, a web, uh, web root uh, or a web server already built in that has many applications already deployed on it that are ready for, for you to use. Uh, so when you click on the web root, you can go to manage or transfer files. In this case, I'm going to go to transfer files. And here you have different uh, applications that are built in to the web server, to, to the file catalyst server to transfer files over the web. One of them is right here, it's called link. So if I click on email link, uh, this launches the uh, link interface. As you can see, it launches the uh, requires file catalyst transfer agent, which you can just see here, it blinked very quickly. And now the user is ready to send files. The reason I wasn't prompted for install is that right before I started the demo, I already logged in. So normally you would get prompted for username and password, but because I'm already logged in, this little key here uh, remembers my credentials. So I just get in right away to, to the right place. Uh, so at this moment, all I have to do is enter my recipient, uh, enter my subject, and here are some files. I can specify whether I want to have expiry of this package. So uh, do I want to have uh, single use, that means as soon as the recipient has downloaded the files, the link is inactive. I can have default date, so this is the dates recommended by the system. Or I can put a custom date that has to be before the default date. Uh, and this is once again, the admin decides what, uh, what, what expiry dates to set. Uh, single use is limited to only one recipient, um, but uh, default date uh, will work for many multiple recipients. So here I entered my recipient, I put my subject message when the link expires, and now I can go here and browse and select files to upload. So let's say I'll go to a directory here, select a couple of my files, and you can see files right away start uploading, and I hit send. So this is really what's happening on the link side. So now you're uploading the files to the server. The server will store them in a specific folder called FC Outbox. And this link gets generated and emailed. So let me show you how this looks. So let me just uh, show you how this looks on the... Let me just close this here. There you go. Um, let me show you how this looks on the email side. And... Uh, and, and then you can uh, you, you can see on the recipient. So now we're going to flip hats here, and now we're going to become the recipient of of these files. So here's that message that came in, and you can see here's the email. Uh, so this email, once again, there's you can what you can control here as the uh, administrator is the logo really. So this logo here, you can upload your own company logo. 
this logo will also appear on the web interface when the user clicks on the link to download the files. So if I click over here, I get so the same logo here uh, will 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 appear as in the email, and now I'm the recipient. So as the recipient, what can I do here? Well, as the recipient, I can select which file I want to download. I can add them to my download queue, and I can click on download selected files, or I can click on download all, and then it downloads everything. So this is downloading all the files, and now my transmission is complete. So it, uh, the application gives you here a little open download location, which will make your Windows Explorer or on Mac your Windows Finder, and you can see they, they just end up in downloads, the files that were sent. Uh, if, user, if the end user chooses to change the target directory where the files are to be saved, uh, they can do this in a transfer agent and they can go to open the transfer agent configuration and they can change here the download path. So the download path automatically will go to downloads like all the applications, but you can overwrite that and change it to point it to another place if you, if you want to save the files in some other location. Um, so, so this is really the, the link side of things. Uh, I'm now going to switch and talk to you about uh, the hot folder application here. So this hot folder application is the automated client that allows to transfer push data or pull data from the server. So, oh, on the server side, I just mentioned here, you can do local paths or you can do UNC paths. So you can do paths like backslash, backslash, server, uh, share name, server name, share name, and uh, create the uh, uh, home directories or virtual files or folders on on the uh, on Samba shares, for example. So let's let's switch uh, now to hot folder. Uh, the hot folder application is uh, uh, you can create a site. Uh, the site will allow you to uh, there will be a file catalyst server. Uh, you can create your folder. So now here I have two. I have one for uploads, one for downloads, and then I create a task in my scheduler. So here I already have an upload task. I can decide which site, which hot folder, decide the direction, and then you can set the schedule. So is it going to run once a day, every hour, every minute? You can you can configure this. Uh, you have also the ability to do always on with file system events. If you enable this, then file cut, then hot folder will register with file system events. And if you let's say have a directory of five million files. We don't have to traverse it to figure out what to transfer. We'll just listen to the changes of the file system events. Uh, so this is good for backup or archival. Uh, for uh, connection, you can do uh, you can specify the aggression. So how much you want us to push file catalyst server? You want to push away the TCP traffic. So uh, the goal is to always make TCP traffic slower, but still allow it through. And this is what uh, this congestion control does. We have uh, two types of congestion control. One is RTT, one is loss-based. And RTT is ideal for uh, wireless connectivity, sort of like LTE satellite. So if you're transferring files from a vessel, you probably want to do it RTT-based. Otherwise, you can do it loss-based for landlines. Uh, transfer, you can do an MD5 checksum. So after a, a transfer, we'll do an MD5 verification. Uh, you can force, again, file ownership on the system. So once you're downloading, let's say you want to have a specific user owning the files after they land, you can do that. And uh, you can also do uh, a multi-client. So multi-client is ability to have multiple worker connections. So let's say you have a folder of 100 files. You set this to, let's say, two. So it will be two files fly, uh, in flight at any given time. This further optimizes the transfers. It gets uh, things going faster. Instead of doing one at a time, you can, you can enable this. And the nice part is here is that this, this allows you to also rescan for files while the task is running. So let's say you have a task set up to run once a day. And while the transfer is going, there's another file dropped. Uh, the uh, the multi-client will detect that new file and transfer it and not leave it for the next uh, the next scheduled transfer. So so we can prioritize transfers. We have ability to do rsync 
uh, or deltas, we call this file deltas, where if you transfer version one of a file, and then there is a version two that uh, instead of resending the entire file, you can compute the uh, difference and transfer just the difference uh, for the next version of the file. You have compression built in. Once again, the compression is only zip or LMZA. Uh, that compression is really good for you know, log files, SQL files, databases. Uh, it doesn't work very well for already compressed files like video or uh, an existing zip or gzip files. So uh, you have exclude here. You can exclude those compressed files and include it into single, include only the uh, extensions that are good for compression. Another nice part is here you have something called single archive. So let's say if you want to move a uh, thousand smaller files like you know i don't know one meg files uh we can you can lump it into an archive and transfer that archive and then automatically unzip it so the process of zipping unzipping and bundling is all behind the scenes you will just see a file transfer going and uh, sometimes we call this zip chunking sometimes it's called single archive transfers but this is really useful for those cases where you're sending let's say hundreds or millions of small files and you want to zip chunk it together uh, dynamic this allows you to send grow, growing files uh, this works really good for video when you have a video file that is growing you can we can chase kind of the end of the file and transfer it as it arrives on the disk uh, so this uh, this gives you there that ability uh, file sets so keep in mind that here I'm only have one task but you could have a lot of tasks you could have task for small files the task for big files uh, a task for uh, files ending with specific extension or specific uh, file name so you can you can uh, you can specify here exactly the file sets you need to send and you have also the synchronization options so if you want to do a replication uh, wide area network file replication you can you can enable these settings and post tasks well that will be you know you can move files to a folder do nothing delete the files you could call a url to let's say update your if you have a crm that needs to be updated like salesforce uh, to tell it that oh yeah i finished this transfer you, you can you, all of this integration is built in as well as you have email alerts so that's that's pretty much the direct uh, the hot folder and the server uh, just in a quick nutshell uh, wanted to go through central so if I log in here to central so imagine this is a visibility management layer on top of file catalyst direct server so in this case here I uh, have my file catalyst server I have my two nodes Create it, and I can see exactly what's transferring and when, and I can pull reports from from specific transfers, as well as see any alerts. Like here, I have, a, for example, an alert uh, shows you that if there's a problem, um, you can load up multiple maps, and you can make these layouts yourself. So, for example, here is one, but here I also made this one, uh, different background. Uh, so I put the same nodes, but you, you have multiple nodes. You could have hundreds or even you know hundreds of nodes defined here, and then you decide which node goes which map, and you can have multiple of these map objects. So it's very easy. Once you're doing operations, you need to figure out what's go what's what went wrong and where. You can very easily see it visually here. Uh, if yeah, I'm gonna just here I should go to my hot folder, and I'm gonna start a transfer. So once I start a transfer here in the hot folder, you can actually see what's being what, what's being transferred, which file. It will give me uh, the ETA for the whole transfer. So this one is, for example, 17 minutes. And now in central here, this will this link lights up and shows me what's being transferred on this link. I can go to transfers here and see also current transfers and uh, i can see this if i want to go to history i can search for files you know that end for example in pdf and will show me all the pdf transmissions um, the reporting you can set up reporting for the entire system or specific nodes you can also group the nodes together so so when you edit the map here i could group for example i'll edit this map here i can group the map together 
so I can add an organizer here. Uh, clients, add organizers. And now I can group these two together. So now I can have a specific report just for the client's part and not the server part um, that will that will show me this. So so now I can if I want to do a report by selection, I can I can uh, select the select the the organizer and that will show me uh, that will show me just the transfer for that one piece of data. Uh, last thing in central you can do is you can do remote administration of nodes. So, for example, if I need to administer the ser server sitting in New York City here, I can click on connect to node. And this gives me a web-based interface, very similar to the one I showed you before uh, on, the, on the server here. But this, is, this runs in a GUI, uh, but this one is web-based and gives you full information which users uh, you can do you can you can see monitoring and can see the transfers um, uh, coming in and and you can you can you can follow the transfers through here you can add users change the user's location uh, you can uh, you can manage the, the 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 system basically through central same same applies to if I connect for example the transfer agent which is uh, it's not an automated client. It's a client that is uh, can transfer specific files. I can connect to this specific uh, transfer agent, and now I can uh, browse the data on the left, which are my files residing on on that specific system, and I can connect to any specific uh, server on this side and fire up a transfer. So if I go here, for example and I want to move some files, I can browse, select the data I want to move and upload. And now you will actually see that this, uh, this transfer agent now is moving files to from, from the server. So I can do this. Now, all of this is, can be done central, is a full, has a complete REST API. So everything I show you here can be done programmatically via REST. Uh, so this has becomes a very powerful tool when you need to move data on your corporate network uh, through, on di from different locations. You can programmatically create tasks that move certain folders to certain places, and then you can manage it all through Central. The last uh, last piece is the uh, administration of alarms. So uh, the alarms can be either done through email. So if there's an error, you can send an email uh, that happened, or you can do SNMP. So if you have any network enterprise network management console or something like Splunk that is uh, managing your network, you can connect to it, and then you can raise alarms in, in those consoles, and, and it will show you the errors you have. Oh, well over 30 different errors you can capture. And as you're capturing them, you can notify the right person that something went wrong. So uh, so that's that's essentially central. As I mentioned, workflow, I'm going to skip right now. So to finish uh, things off, what are the licensing options? So we have one option is the perpetual license. Uh, so you can buy a license. It's for life. You own it. Uh, there's an optional support and maintenance for 20%. It gives you access to our support. It gives you access to all the upgrades and all the versions. And then it's an annual support of 20%. And this, this is good for you know exactly how much uh, money it's going to cost you. There's no data caps, no metering. Uh, everything is uh, everything is uh, uh, you know exactly what the solution is going to cost and what it's going to do and the speeds. Um, the um, uh, the for support and maintenance for perpetual licensing is included for year one and then optional. It's unmetered as I mentioned, so there's no additional cost for moving data. Basically, as much you can move as much data as there's hours in a day. Um, it's based on the specific bandwidth and concurrency needs you have. So if you how many concurrent transfers you need to do and the bandwidth, the pricing is based on that. And you have options on a la carte where you can buy every specific little feature or you can buy an all-inclusive that gives you uh, a package of pretty much all the functionality and concurrent connections that you need. 
the other option is consumption. Uh, this is uh, uh, for if you have specific project, let's say you have to migrate data from uh, site A to site B, and you know that there is one terabyte of data, and uh, you're going to need that for a month to migrate the data. You can then go on a consumption-based. Uh, there's no upfront cost. Uh, basically, you get everything for free, and then you just pay a meet. You get a metered license, and the cost starts at uh, 35 cents per gig, and drops as you transfer more data. Like once you get to the terabyte, I think you're down to like three, two or three cents a gig. I, uh, but you have uh, you have a cost, and then this is connected to your credit card, and you pay as the transfer goes. Uh, but here, uh, this is perfect for temporary project or when you know how much data you're going to be transferring, and there's no cost of entry. A cloud marketplace. So as I mentioned, we're integrated with a number of uh, cloud vendors. Uh, AWS, Azure, Google, where you can fire up an instance of File Catalyst, uh, and then you just pay per hour. Uh, per hour cost starts as little as $2 per hour and scales up based on the size of the instance. So the bigger the instance, the idea is that the bigger the instance, the faster you'll be able to send, and therefore the cost will be a bit higher. Um, uh, you have also the options to bring your own license, so you could actually license something on, for, based on a perpetual and metered license and apply that license on the cloud and use that uh, server on the cloud and not pay them the per hourly costs. But this is perfect for, again, data migration or projects where you, again, know you're going to be using it for a few days and then shut it down. Uh, the last option that we're launching soon uh, will be File Catalyst Spaces. Uh, that will give you the ability to, uh, will provide you everything. We'll provide you the infrastructure, the networking, the storage. Uh, it's a turnkey solution. You just uh, pay a monthly fee and you get, you know, uh, per additional user, you pay about $10. You pay $10 per user per month. You can add hot folder automation to it. You can add API integration. And then you pay, you know, a penny per gig per month for storage and you pay six cents per gig transferred. Of course, if you're connecting to your own existing on-premise perpetual license, then this fee is waived because you're already on that license. So this is probably gonna come be coming out in uh, in December this year uh, for as, as, as a software as a service, and it's gonna be called File Catalyst Spaces. So for those that are listening in and are not on the live webinar, I wanna at this point say thank you.